Saturday or something, right? And then goes right. Sunday to a, a totally different place and it, the same material and just eat shit all fucking night yeah. with that stuff, man. No, it'll happen. And then you and then you learn that, okay, why does this joke hit here but not here? Yeah. And then you mold it in a way where you get everybody to laugh at it. Yeah. Where it's not just for one room. Like, yeah. Yes, a lot of my jokes that I have now... When I first had them like six years ago. Yeah. Might have just started out as like a sentence, but now it's a, a full five minute thing. Wow. But dude, some of the the beginnings of the jokes, like people would just yell stuff because it would just come <laughs> off as extre- like just straight up offensive. <laughs> and I'm like, you're so new. You, you don't have the social uh, clarity or like awareness to be like. No, no, there is funny in here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're like, no, Trust you me. just, you just suck. <laughs> but you knew there was something in there. You I, know? you know what though? Like, I started out kind of like most comics, where like it was more like offensive than it, like I was being more shocking than funny. Right. You know what okay. I mean? Exactly. But, like, I just need some kind of reaction. Yeah. That signifies I'm not bombing. Yeah. So it was yeah. oohs and ahs more right. than laughs yeah. and. You know, like I, I'm fortunate in that I have I, I have a wife that uh, like she's she's been with me, I've been with her for like 18 years, you know, so oh, she she's dude. not scared to like tell me the truth of things, you know right. what I mean? And so she'll tell me like that sucks or like, you know, she'll, she'll say like you need to work on like more universal material mm-hmm. and like make it to where like older people are laughing, younger people laugh and like, you know, because like Florida is so mixed with our audiences so it's not always like unless you're going to like the villages or something like that, it, you're gonna get right. more of like a mixed crowd. Oh, you'll know when it's not a mixed crowd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, Florida, Florida is between like a room in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. like an all black room, and then Florida. I think are like the two places where pretty much anything goes. Okay, I like, like that I feel though. Like or. Yeah, because there's so many, I mean, so many cities now, it's like, you just don't know. Like, yeah, I was telling you, I was terrified of that Utah show. Oh, I bet, dude. I bet, man. I mean, you got like, that's like, Mormon country, bro. <laughs> I know, but everybody was so awesome. Yeah. And it was just like, oh. But he, so that's the thing I've learned is like, also, don't don't judge the audience. Yeah. Like, sometimes I peek out and every, you just see a sea of white hair. I'm like, I'm going to bomb. I'm going to bomb. <laughs> I'm going to bomb. Yeah, like, this is over. My my worst set ever was in a club with like it was my first club set and it was it, there was not a lot of people there it was probably like ten people and they were all over sixty five and it was like right when I first started and I had no business being there like somebody canceled and a friend invited me and I was not ready I didn't show up yeah. like oh I'm gonna do stand up you know I just showed up and they were like hey we had two guys cancel on us can you go up and I'm like okay. And yeah, it was uh, it was five minutes of silence. Like, how much time have you done, like prior to that? Oh, that was like my fifth show. <laughs> oh, and was the ten were the ten people that were there scattered sporadically throughout the room? I will say it's the only club we have in Brevard County, so it's okay. uh, it's Gregory's is what it's called, and they uh, they have a big room, but this was like an off night. It was like a Thursday night, you know. Mm-hmm. And so they only they sold like ten tickets, and the the people were sitting towards the front, but they were spread out in the front. You know what I mean? So okay, you know it was yeah, like a lot of gaps. yeah, it was some gaps. I got one laugh right when I got up there because I was like, I'd like to thank all my grandparents for coming or something, something stupid okay, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And they kind of chuckled, and then it was crickets for ten minutes hey, <laughs> or you, five five minutes. Excuse as me. long as you started strong. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like a Scorsese <laughs> film. Everything's good, and then it just comes crashing <laughs> that's, down. That's, that's exactly how it was. Dude. <laughs> that's yeah. right. It was casino, dude. <laughs> that was my set, Did dude. your car explode? Yeah, when you got it? yeah. It was Joe Pesci <laughs> stabbing a guy, dude. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> was, You'll always remember the worst shows ever. Oh, for sure. But also the best ones. Yeah. I'll say happily the best ones stick with me more. You know, that one that one just made me go, I need to I need to really work on material. Right. And then this is a weird thing to say you get you get lucky about. In February, I got injured at work and I haven't I haven't worked since then. And so my focus has been primarily like writing and stand up. And so I've had now like five months of just like intensive writing and doing stand up, hitting as many stages as I can. 
and Dude, that's a Florida come up. Story. Oh, bro, it's. It, I mean, I like. I was injured at work, and then I, you know, I had time to just j- just write. Yeah, just hit the passion hard. That's you know? awesome, though, man. Maybe yeah, that's maybe that's your your blessing, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like. I'm yeah. now it's starting to go to the doctors and stuff like that. Try to figure out what's going on because workman's comp's like a ridiculous situation. Oh, wow. Yeah. So hope hopefully I want to work, but I also I'm super happy for this like time, man. Mm. I, you just try to like milk it for everything you can man you so. need it man yeah you need it and that's like this whole thing is about buying your time back yes now that stuff's getting more expensive it's like oh i gotta find more ways to make money and mm-hmm. it just pulls you away from this yeah i didn't start doing stand-up till i was 36 man so like i i'm like i i felt coming into it like i was way behind there was a bunch of dudes that started right around me like right after me you know and i realized like within the first couple of months that i had way more life experience than these guys i was able to uh come up with premises from my life just you know that that work and joke form that most people understand because like most of the people buying tickets to comedy shows are like in their 40s you know what i mean and they have kids and they have like spouses and they you know they have a lot of the same things i have like i told my wife when i was 19 hey i want to do stand-up and she was like you should and then we immediately had children (laughs) you know and i just now you're getting back yeah, now, like now you're starting. Now I'm starting, right. Wow. And so I waited, like, my oldest daughter just graduated high school. My younger one's, like, starting middle school. And, and so, like, I, I can get away for a while now. You know, yeah. it's not, like, I they're they're self-sufficient. I don't have to wipe their asses anymore. Yeah, you know? You're like, yeah, they're in the car. <laughs> yeah, they're in the car. He's like, yeah, actually, they are. How much time have we done? <laughs> <laughs> nah, they're one and two. I left the AC on. That's right. That's right. It's all good, dude. <laughs> they're strapped into their car seats. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't even leave it on, man. I, you know, Florida heat, dude. They'll, they'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah, it's called a sauna. Yeah, dude. I went to a wedding one time. It was during the summer, and it was like a hundred something degrees. Right. We've been in this church for like 25, 30 minutes. Right. And they're starting to do their, like the husband and wife, they've been together for a long time. They have 12 kids. All right. And they just now getting married. Yes. Yeah. 12. All right. They're like, like I said, maybe it's five minutes into the procession and the wife looks over and she goes, where's the baby? <laughs> they had left the fucking baby Holy in the car, dude. For real, shit. dude. In like a hundred degree weather for like a half hour. And we all just thought they were going to bring in a dead baby, like, during their wedding. And she wasn't. She was fine. Like, the little kid just came in, like, all right. She was sweaty, but. (laughs) (laughs) I was Uh, like, holy shit, dude. She wasn't responsive, but. (laughs) I thought for sure it was going to turn into, like, we got to call an ambulance (laughs) and shit, dude. (laughs) Dude, that's nuts, man. Yeah, dude. But when you have 12 kids, I mean. You have 12 kids and then decide to get married. Yeah, and you're going to forget one of them. Yeah, like, oh, I think you're the one. Yeah. 12 kids later. That, yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, I can laugh about it now. (laughs) In hindsight. In the moment, I was like, oh, shit. (laughs) No, that's terrifying, dude. Yeah, man. That's Florida for you. And a main event. Yeah, yeah, the main event. That's right. I was at my grandpa's funeral, and a lady... Where there was like a knock at the back door. I don't know why they had the state. It was like the, the altar, mm-hmm. and then just like some door, with like some like New York stairs, like just like very. <laughs> it looked like a set Weird. of like the Blues Brothers, you yeah, know, like Universal, yeah. And the lady just comes like barging in, hits the railing, and just tumbles oh, down shit. the steps. She had to be like ninety, and just doing a and double she, funeral, <laughs> dude. He, dude, she face planted, oh, and God. just. You know, like in Grand Theft Auto, where uh, the pool of blood just gets bigger, yeah, and bigger yeah. very quickly. That's what happened, bro. Oh and I'm no, like maybe eight years old. <sighs> and yeah, that's what I said to my grandma. I just said I tugged her and I said, "Are they gonna have another funeral?" <laughs> and she actually laughed, but it was just like horrific, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can imagine. Yeah. I like that you made your grandma laugh in a, a horrifying situation. You're like, "Oh, this, I'm gonna be a stand up when I'm older." <laughs> yeah, it was just like. I just had the one year anniversary, or not one year, excuse me. It was like uh, nine years ago. I saved a kid's life, right? Yeah. And uh, I, it was it was the only hero moment I have in my life. I, I saw it because like uh, my wife posted about it on Facebook the day it happened, and uh, I was I was living in Washington State, and we were like going around this uh, lake, 
you know, there's like a walking trail around this big ass lake. And these two kids were like, and the kids, they were like 13, you know what I mean? They were like swimming in the lake, you know? And like, it's a pretty a big ass lake. And this kid was like, I'm going to swim all the way across it. And he got halfway in fucking classic dude just couldn't go any further man. Oh my God. and he started screaming for help and michael I, help yeah just <laughs> help help <laughs> i thought he was fucking around you know so i'm like standing on the shore like are you for real <laughs> he's just flailing man uh, and i'm a good swimmer so i just i mean i just ran out or not ran out i swam out there and got him and i told him when i like as i was swimming up to him i was like i'm gonna grab you i need you to go limp bro like just go limp i'll dra <laughs> i'll drag you back to the shore and, and I go, if you don't, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> and he's oh, like, oh, I will, I will. You, yeah. yeah. And then I grabbed him and he, he like literally just, yeah. And I just like back stroked all the way back to the shore, man. That's just, <laughs> how embarrassing. Bro. Oh, man. <laughs> he, he barely said, thank you. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> I mean, you told another man to go limp. Yeah, that's true, dude. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I, I mean, I've said it before. Or but. I'll punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I got him back there, and he was like, whew, and then just walked away. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. This fucking guy. <laughs> to just, like, almost drown yourself. Yeah. yeah you he, he put your life in danger. Dude. For sure, dude. He did. Yeah. And But, you know, the, the best part about it is uh, my kids were standing there. And so, like, they were like, our dad's a hero. <laughs> yeah, they like, you know? oh, he would definitely get me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've had to save them from now drowning. Now they're like, okay, I will clean my room. <laughs> yeah, now that I know he's exactly. capable of saving right. someone right. from drowning. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's uh, like uh, it's good That's to awesome. have hero moments, but it's it's definitely good when like the family's watching, you know, like all right, <laughs> just so you know. But yeah, you saw that. This is what I'm capable of. <laughs> but both my kids have almost drowned in different situations too cuz we kids are dumb dude so like when they're little like they don't know better to like oh i'm going to just jump in the deep end oh yeah you know they and don't know how to panic. swim <laughs> yeah and then they the, panic the thing is though like babies do know how to swim that's true yeah and then you just what forget i think so remember I, your training well, you I yell think, at them i think babies don't know how to panic so they like their natural instincts just kick in and they just like <laughs> flip over and float you know what i mean but little kids that might be it they're like <laughs> This is all we know how to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, little kids know how to panic though. <laughs> you know, That's so like true. as soon as they go into a situation, they they go full on panic mode, and then it's just sink to the bottom. <laughs> there is something to be said for that. Yeah, dude. Just I, stay full baby mode. Just your stay, whole life. That's right, dude. Just, <laughs> just never panic. You're dude. all good. <laughs> you just fall off a cliff no and go matter. limp. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm gonna say. If I ever have to save anybody, dude, that's what that's my go to move. Just hey, go limp. <laughs> You're like I'm rock hard. Hard, dude. <laughs> no, nah, stay limp. Well, fear uh, allegedly, like uh, you can't you can't get boners when you when you're scared. Huh. Like your your dick shrinks into your body when you're scared. So, I think so? yeah, I don't know, man. Watch some horror movies that are like really what about scary. like a fear erection. Maybe somebody, gets <sighs> dude. There's probably like some psycho out there, dude. Oh, Just yeah. like like a uh, fucking. American Psycho, dude. You know, like that guy's like <laughs> scared, jerking off. Dude. You know, it's like I'm so scared right now. Yeah, he's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> you know, there's some psychos out there. That All right, <laughs> pop out of the bushes and scare me again. That's I'm right. about to finish. I'm about to come. <laughs> oh, no, there's, yeah, there's some there's some people that are, their wiring's a little bit off. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. But I remember there was some movie my dad was watching when I was a kid. There's this movie, and I don't know what it was. It, this guy was uh, this guy was like getting held at gunpoint by this group, right? And the guy goes, "Hey, don't shoot me, you know, like please don't shoot me." And he goes, "I right, get it up." And the guy's like holding a gun to him. He's like, "Get it up." He's like, "If you get it up, I won't shoot you." <laughs> and the guy's like, "Uh, what?" <laughs> I swear to God, dude, that's crazy. It might have been a porno. <laughs> now that I'm thinking yeah, about it, I don't you know. know. <laughs> Maybe you downloaded the wrong thing off LimeWire. That's true. Yeah, exactly. Like, I just wanted a uh, Little Wayne's Kush, and that's I got. <laughs> The get hard edition. Nah, we were Kazaa boys, bro. You know, like it, LimeWire was good, but Kazaa <laughs> Kaza had less Damn. ads, dude. That must be like, yeah, it must be before LimeWire. Yeah, it was. Yeah. My, my brother was a, a tech nerd, you know, so like we had all the computers growing up and everything. Okay. We, we were like the... F we had like one of those like CDRW drives that you had to buy. It was like a disk drive that was separate, but okay. you could burn stuff onto disks. 
with oh, it. Oh, right. Like, now it's just built into you every computer. You were, like, computer. the cool kid. Oh, dude, for sure. When you, I, when you could burn CDs, dude. Dude, dude I would sell them uh, for 10 bucks a pop, right? And I, I had, like, through Napster and all that stuff, I had, like, a whole... I had every song that anybody wanted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, all the hot stuff... Had it all. So people would just be like, hey, here's 10 bucks. They give me a list of 12 songs. I'll burn them a CD, right? Dude, I was making hundreds of dollars a week That's off my crazy. school. And it didn't take me, like, because I already had the shit downloaded. So I just put it yeah. on the fucking CD and, and bring you it in. just buy the stack of blanks. Yeah, dude. I'd buy the hundred stack, right? Yep. And I mean, my dad would buy it and I would just never reimburse him for any of it, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. I was making, like, there were some weeks where I, Pull a couple hundred bucks, man. And, and when I you're in, like, ninth grade, like, eighth grade, that's that's good money, dude. Yeah, I, man. I remember having the VCR um, winder, like, mm-hmm. so as soon as the movie's over, you pop it out and put it in this thing, and it just, <laughs> and you would, like, be so stoked <laughs> that you could rewind a movie yeah. in, like, 30 seconds. Yeah, dude. Well, I remember when they came out with the, uh, the two two tape VCRs uh-huh. so you could like uh you could take one tape and copy it while it's playing oh shit so <laughs> that's next level it was pretty sweet dude we might have so we, we would rent shit from know. blockbuster and just copy every video wow you know what i mean like so what any a world any cool ass movie it was like yeah but because it was like it was just like a regular vcr it just had two tape decks you know what i mean and then my dad would just buy these like blank discs dude and or blank uh tapes just f- yeah, anything, dude. Like, it was, it was yeah. sweet. We also had one of those, like, huge video recorders that you could put VHS tapes in and record straight to VHS. What? Yeah, dude, it was like... I remember they were smaller, and then they became a disc, and now yeah. it's all now digital. Now it's digital, yeah. But yeah, I remember, like, right... I remember, like, floppy disks, dial-up, the phone on the wall, and then, like, within three years... Oh, yeah. Everything changed. I had a Razor phone. Yeah, I'm dude. Like, what's happening? <laughs> That's right, man. Yeah. Because I'm 29, so it's just like, yeah, it was a weird, it was a, it was like the most rapid change Hell yeah. as like a child. I can't imagine now. Dude, my dad had a phone that plugged into his cigarette lighter in his car, and it was like a full, like a, it was like a briefcase. Oh, like an airstrike. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was like a briefcase plugged <laughs> in the cigarette lighter. Was it, unzip it. <laughs> it <was> yeah. Like, <laughs> but then I also remember like the old Zach Morris. Bravo, Charlie, one. Great we phones. are <laughs> taking heavy fire from the flank. Yeah. Those things look like you call aliens. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're huge, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, it goes off like freaking pulse yeah frequency yeah and the yeah exactly the sound it made when it was ringing was like it deafening dude like, yeah every time <laughs> i open it there's a saucer appears <laughs> so, hey, yeah dude <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's what drew the aliens to us man is those fucking brick phones yeah, what that was et's phone <laughs> that's right he that's was it's phone and like, yo you stole my shit ah <laughs> oh, man that's uh yeah you, i think technology should have stopped yeah you should like hard cap it, like like. Well, because now we have smartphones and everybody just gets lost in that shit. It's all now. It's all just like let's change a few things. Have yeah. you noticed? It's not uh, lately. It hasn't been like there's not like any advancements. I mean, now people will be like, "Oh, what about AI?" Yeah, but it's like they just move buttons. Yeah. or take shit away. Yep, and they go whoa, like like Apple took the home button away. Yep, and then people. Like, like, oh, it's so advanced now. It's buttonless. <laughs> like, dude, that's what I learned when I worked at Best Buy for, like, six months. Yeah. Was the cult following to some of these products. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, dude. That's why I don't suck that Apple dick, dude. I got a Samsung. <laughs> it's everything, though. Yeah. Like, they love it. Oh, I know. It's, I mean, my, I'm mean, the only one in my, like, my kids both have iPhones, my wife, mm-hmm. too, and they constantly, like, oh, you got fucking green text or whatever, <laughs> like, like, like Apple people will shame the fuck out of you. You know what I mean? Like, it's the full divide. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's the North versus South now. Dude. It's like it is, dude. that's right. The Civil War, bro. Who do you think would win? Honestly, <laughs> Samsung, dude. If no, if if <laughs> people with Apple phones had to go to war with people with Android phones, See, the thing is, there's who more. Win? There's more of y'all. But there's a bunch of Apple users that are straight pussies. But dude. I feel like a lot of people with Androids. <laughs> yeah. Are capable of 
of uh, murder, more destruction. Yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like he, like the guy in the trailer park doesn't have an iPhone. You know what I mean? He's <laughs> he's got a metro <laughs> metro boost yeah. phone. Dude. Chances are, if you have an Android, you have an arsenal. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. You're more likely to have yeah, a couple I, AKs. You I know? definitely, yeah. If, if Android and Apple fans went to war, Android fans would. It would we'd be a slaughter. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Like if I think if you pulled school shooters, like most of those guys are <laughs> Samsungers, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they should start doing that. If they should, find yeah. his phone at the scene of the crime. Yeah. Like it was a galaxy. Yeah. Oh yeah. This makes sense. Yeah. They're just gonna start red flagging all the Android <laughs> users in schools. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people with the iPhone just I don't know. Yeah, like you said, it's a bigger army. Yeah, yeah, but big isn't always better. That's true. <laughs> you know, That's like true. I like. There's a lot of soft Apple users. Is what I'm. That's saying. right. Yeah, you, you no, know, we're getting there. Yeah, I was get, trying to get at that. There's uh, yeah. there, there's guys like most most Apple users wearing khakis during the day. You know, right. so because <laughs> yeah, usually when you get out of prison, you don't get an iPhone. No, nah, dude, you, you go know, straight your to first Boost phone Mobile. Back, your first phone back is like your your boys like, hey man, like, you know. Yeah. They're not like, yo, I got you on my family plan. Yeah. iPhone fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we you got, got three <laughs> uh, three free months of Apple TV. Dude. That's right, dude. We gotta see how long you can be out before we get you an iPhone. You know, yeah. <laughs> like that's how you can tell how long someone's been in prison if you hand them an iPhone and they go, "What is what this?" What is like, this? Oh shit, right, um, bro, you were in. You, yeah. <laughs> Let's get you the flip phone. That's right. <laughs> He's like, I haven't had a cell phone since the Razor, bro. <laughs> Yo, when I robbed that bank, the sidekick just came. <laughs> That's up. right, dude. That thing's sweet, though, man. When I, dude, dude I wanted a side. My buddy had a it sidekick. It was a giant piece of shit. It was, but dude. I loved it. But it was so cool, man. It was like yeah. having a switchblade when you were a kid. You know what I mean? Anything like, that flipped open, the phone that flipped open with the keyboard. Yeah. Like when they actually added the keyboard. I remember, dude. I remember texting, button style. Yeah. Like you, fe- it just felt. Awesome. It did feel good. Now texting is just. Yeah, oh, I got another. If you have a video plan, you can't even feel the buttons. You know, like you know how like when you push buttons on the right. on the, even the screen, it like vibrates a little, you know, or whatever. I you, might go back you if get, they make a phone with a full keyboard. Yes, dude. Like, well, I think you could still get like a BlackBerry. You know, I had a CrackBerry. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah, it was like the prepaid. Oh yeah, and yeah. I actually really enjoyed. Were it. Were you fresh out of jail, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Damn near. That was when I first got back to Florida from California, and I was like. I don't need an iPhone. I hate social media. This was before I did comedy. Yeah. I don't need social media. It's all bullshit. I got like a little Crackberry, but it had the trackball on it. Hell yeah, dude. So I could just move around and select stuff. And Hell I was yeah. like, dude, this is all you need. I, I That old school texting was it was shitty though. I mean, where it's like you had to hit four buttons oh, for one that. letter. That was horrible. But the mini keyboard. Yeah, that was, was sweet. game changer. Yeah, that was, that was, I, I'm pretty sure that was the sidekick, the first one. And it was either sidekick or Blackberry that that started that, and they were like, "All right, this is it." And then we, and then technology just boomed so fast that they just jump right over that to yep. touch screens. Yeah, it was. I, I'm with you. I feel like we should peek it out right now. That's it. Just no more. Yeah. You know, like we we've, we've got everything we need right now. You know, it's just too much. Yeah, like too much is coming at you. The more. <laughs> Like, I go into a lot of people's homes now. Like, everyone has the Roomba. And I'm like, just does that even work? Barely. Properly? I have four. I, I Excuse me. I have three big dogs in my house, uh-huh. you know. And we have one of those. It wasn't a Roomba because we're not. The, we're not. We don't have Roomba money yet. Right, <laughs> you right. know, like, it was, uh, it was a Bob Sweep is what it was called. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> we got Bob Sweep money. Okay. <laughs> Bob Sweep. And that thing was a, it, dude, No. Uh, it works yeah, shitty. Yeah, but I'm just like, the robots are slowly coming. Yeah. Everything's, it's starting with the, the disc vacuum cleaner. For sure. And now they got the lawnmowers, too. They got, like, the oh, yeah. the robot lawnmowers. Yeah, when I was in, I first saw that, like, six years ago. I was in France, and they had a bunch of those. And I was like, oh, it's because they don't have Mexicans. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the, yeah, Span- Spaniards over there, they're they're classier. They're like, we got to figure out yeah. what to do. Yeah. Nobody's trying to leave Spain. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, because <laughs> Spain's nice as fuck, man. Me- I, have you ever been to Mexico? I haven't, dude. I uh, really want to go, man. Okay. It's like, a good time. Yeah. But it's, depending on where you're at, you know, it's, it's like All every, right. like, have you ever been to like a third world country? You know what I mean? 
I don't think so. No. Okay. I spent a lot of time in LA. Yeah. Around the coast that's is real fun. Yeah, 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 for sure, dude. Like you're East LA, dude. That's that's you've been to Mexico dude. if you've been to East LA. <laughs> Just the beaches now. Yeah. It's like crazy. And I like uh I mean I haven't been there since like the pandemic, you know? Yeah. And I know it's changed a lot, like the right. homeless homeless situation and all that. But uh I went I went there in uh twenty sixteen and like we went Okay. We I mean we stayed in Anaheim, so not not okay. really LA. But we we went all over, man. It was it was really nice then, man. And like we went down to like Newport and like oh yeah, that's, that's so fucking super nice. nice dude. It's so yeah. nice, man. I was like walking around like this is fuck. I, this if I lived in L.A., this is where I'd live. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, that's that's like south. That's yeah. like down by the beaches. That's, yeah, that's a different world, man. Well, then the I was looking at there is crazy. I was looking at property costs around there, and it's like, dude, like a one bedroom apartment back then was like three grand. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it's so expensive. Yeah, now it's even crazier. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's it's a beautiful. Like I love California, man. Yeah, but some of it you just drive through. You're like, this is a hellscape. Yep. Like, what's happening here? I remember, like, I lived in uh, Sacramento when I was a kid. Okay. Uh, and I remember we'd like if we were gonna go have like a fun day, we'd go to like San Francisco and stuff. And I remember one time we took the wrong bridge and went into Oakland. And I was like, oh, this is <laughs> this is also <laughs> California, dude. You know, yeah. like, this is crazy. I guess that's everywhere, though. Man. Yeah. Because I'm, now I'm thinking, like, Florida. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the same exact For way. For sure. You're like, oh, shit, yeah. back on the exit. Really? Yeah. Like, oh, no. Yeah, when I, I'm getting I, back up. I went down to Miami to do a show, like, two week, three, <laughs> oh, three yeah. weeks ago, dude. And I was, like, I was driving through. I was, like, where the fuck is this show, dude? Like, this is, I'm in Little Havana. Like, <laughs> Dude, it, Miami goes from, like, insane wealth to just, like, we got to get Poverty. off the street. Yes, dude. Yeah. I remember, like, when we were walking down the street, I, like, at first, we, I was, like, I was driving through, like, these, like, very rough neighborhoods, and then we finally got to, like, the street that the the show was on, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I was, I, I immediately sw- shifted. I was, like, oh, this is nice. Like, you know, it's just guys smoking cigars with, like, uh, <laughs> Cuban music playing in the background, yeah, you know, right, that's right. not bad. Some flower shirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. Like, a fedora hat, yeah. you know. Yeah. But it was, like, everybody. Like, that, like. Right. The stereotype held true, man. Like that was they were like, This is Cuba. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's basically Yeah, like a whole I don't know, Miami I couldn't get the feel for Miami when I was there because it was just like I feel like you really do have to know Spanish. <sighs> yeah. Like, like if I knew Spanish, I'd probably be like, This is awesome. I well that's what uh America's Got Talent is now, right? <laughs> It's crazy, man. No, you, no, America's Got Talent, you just have to have, like, one leg and a sad story. That's what I mean, man. Yeah. It's like, like, at what point does it become, go from, like, a talent show to, like, the Special Olympics of talent shows, you know? Yeah, they're just like, this guy lost his whole family in a house fire, and uh, he's going to juggle. That they're is. like, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. He's going to juggle his family's ashes. Oh, the balls. Have the ashes of his family in them. That's right. And then he ends up dropping and them all. It's a B roll of people crying in the crowd. And they Gold, r- golden buzzer. Yeah, and, yeah. and, yeah. and, and they run a fucking guy co ad and it's over. Yeah, dude. And that's, that's TV in America now. For sure, dude. Yeah. But if you're like outside of America watching it, they're like, man, there's a lot of. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie, dude. I, I've, I've eaten a few dinners watching Wipeout. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that show? Yeah, of course. It's still on, actually. Is it really? Yeah. When that show first came out, we also would like because that was we like, like something we could watch with the dumb. kids, you know, yep. yeah, and just watch these dudes get fucked up, <laughs> yeah. dude. I mean, it is entertaining, but then like you watch it and you're just like, wow, I could be doing so much more with my time. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's uh, my wife is a reality TV junkie. Oh, like no. she doesn't watch regular TV. Like you know, if I'm like, hey babe, let's watch Game of Thrones, she's like, no. No, nah, I want to watch The Bachelor, <laughs> you know, like, oh, uh, so I get a lot of time to write, <laughs> you know, people, people get bit by those shows. Yeah, man, dude. They just got to keep watching. them. It's, it's true, man. They, they, uh, I like it when they have like, like they all have the same sound effects. You know what I mean? Like it's, something bad's happening, you know, and like just fake laughter sometimes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's like the same 10 sound effects for every single show. Yeah. <laughs> and it all just seems so, for it to be reality, it all seems so, like, orchestrated. Oh, you know? it's because it all is now. Yeah. You know, like, the amount of people that think Impractical Jokers is, like, 
Like the they're reactions actually yeah. pranking people. Like yeah. people are sitting there for an hour. It's like, oh, we got you. You sat there for an hour. They're the same people that think those street magicians have real audience people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like <laughs> there's no way. Yeah, like, no, it's like all it's all a casting call. Hey, hundred dollars. Yeah, I know because my kid, show. my kid gets them. <laughs> you know, like yeah. she she gets those casting calls all the time, dude. You know, a little extra fifty bucks. Yeah, you know, stand here. Comes with a sandwich. That's right. Just react. That's they all you need. Need a body. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And they call it. Oh, I'm a background actor. That's yep. No, she, you're you're homeless. Yeah. You're <laughs> <laughs> I can't really talk about the homeless people because I look like a homeless guy. You know, like if I didn't have nice clothes on, bro, oh, dude, you pull it off. Yeah. You know, I like you, man, because you were always like, you're always like the yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. No matter what, dude, like the ultimate therapist. Yeah, dude. Yeah, man, you'll figure it out, man. Yeah, man. It's, it's yeah. all good. I've always been like an upbeat person. I know. Like, right? I'm not a. I feel that. Like, I'm not a, a person who like struggles with depression and stuff like that. Mm. So. Um, even when like bad stuff happens, I try to figure my way through it, you know? You baby it, dude. I do, yeah. Yeah, just I go limp. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what happens. I just go limp. It'll figure itself out. <laughs> oh, it's incredible. Yeah. But my wife is like a stressor. She like stresses about uh, everything. Okay. So I let her do stress about it, you know? Uh, that's you. Like me. Well, that's your yin and yang. Yeah, for sure. You gotta have someone that's like, you know. Yeah. You, if you both were like, yeah, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, who knows where you'd be? Yeah, yeah, dude, we'd be homeless right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah cause I don't, I like, I live my life with very little responsibility. As, as for as much as I have and I do and stuff, right. like I let my wife, my wife stresses about it all, and but you just don't let it get to you. Like, no. Yeah, you really have to look at everything like, what's the next best move? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. for sure. And not get like weird about. You know, let your like emotions, yeah. Well, consume also consume you. It gets like, uh, it gets like. I mean, I feel it sometimes for sure. You know, like, oh, yeah. um, uh, yeah, like, like I'm I'm on a sh show right now that we do weekly, right? Mm -hmm. And it's sort of a copy of another show. Okay, right? And it's uh, the show that it copied is like huge. It's like the biggest comedy show in the world. Oh, okay, all right, and. Uh, the guy who runs this show was uh, saw a video of the big show talking about this little show that I'm on. Oh, really? And was like, basically, like we're gonna, you know, we're gonna sue their asses, and anybody who's associated with that show can't do this show. Oh shit! And uh, and so now I'm like nervous to even do this little show because eventually, like, I want to, I want to go out and be able to do the bigger show too. You right, know what I mean? Right. But so now I'm like really nervous about it. Like I don't know if I even want to be associated with this. And then he took the guy who runs the little show took the clip of them them talking about it and then put his logo all over it for the little show and just uh, posted yeah. that online man and it, it makes me nervous dude like that's yeah well i mean if you feel it in <coughs> your in your gut like that's the thing with um the internet and everything now is like you do kind of have a social credit score yeah so it's like don't get associated with that cuz i've seen i've seen a comic who was very funny, and he used to open for, like, a massive comedian, like, mm. Private Jet here and there. Yeah. The big comedian that he used to open for just was, like, the biggest piece of shit to everyone around him. Mm -hmm. Kind of, like, once he got big, yeah. was like, fuck all you motherfuckers. Oh, uh, yeah. You know? And then as he slowly started to not be the big comedian anymore. Yeah. Now, my buddy that's coming up, He's just guilty by association. Yep. Just because he was his opener, mm -hmm. now they look at him as the same piece of shit. And it's like, you know, he still gets spots and he's making a living doing it. Yeah. But it's like, man, once you get that, the once stigma. you get your name, you know, with some mud on it, it's yeah. like, it's not good, dude. Well, like, so. I, I initially was like, oh, this is fine because this is like a small local show. Like, mm -hmm. it's not... It's, it's not going to, like, they're not going to know about this. But right. also, like, I when you're doing comedy shows, there's only so many types of comedy shows that you can have. You know right, what I mean? Right. And so I'm like, oh, well, like, 
like having a show that's similar it's like it's like how every city has a roast battle you know what i mean right. like it's, it might be called something different but it's all roast battles you know what i mean exactly and so i'm like okay this is something that happens in comedy and then i as i got further into it i kind of realized like comedy is all about authenticity and like mm -hmm. being new and having new ideas and that kind of thing right and i was kind of like maybe this isn't the best option you know and I don't know, man. I'm real. Like that's the stuff that stresses me out. Like I'm, conf I'm conflicted as fuck yeah, about man. this. Yeah, well, man. Well, if um, you know what you know what you're supposed to do. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I feel. I, f I feel like. Yeah. So if it's walk away, then walk away. Yeah. You know I, what I'm saying? I, I I have to agree. I think so. Okay, especially if it's like an exact copy of something else. It's it's that's the worst thing with comedy is like, and so many people now, and I fell victim to it when I lived in LA is like, you just every, you look, you start looking at everything as a formula. Yes. As an algorithm. And yep. if you're just trying to copy a winning formula, yeah, then you're not being true to yourself. Exactly. And it's like, you're just, you know, that's what I think when they, when they say like selling your soul, it's yeah. not like, Oh, here devil, give me, yeah. You know, a Bugatti. It's like, you're selling your soul as in like, you're not being true to yourself. Yeah. So yeah, you know what to do, man. Yeah, like, man. I think, I, th I, I think I do. Unfortunately. Yeah. I like I like building our local comedy scene where we're at. Mm -hmm. It's I mean, I try to help as much as I can and you know and and like our scene is is small but mighty. You know what I mean? Like we have a lot of good comics. <clears throat> Most of us all kind of started around each other and so um, we like help each other out and I mean you've done a bunch you've done shows over with us, oh, yeah. you know. No, like you guys have you guys have it going on, man, because it's like you it, it same with Orlando. It's like it's there's not very many clubs, but you just got to find spots. Yeah. And, and sometimes turn them into comedy clubs. Yep. Well, like that, that bar that we have, Muggsy's, like you went there, like that, that place is pretty fucking fire. It's fun for, as hell, man. For an uh, open mic. I got to start getting back there, dude. It's not, it's actually not an open mic anymore. Oh, like no? this past week was the first week. I mean, if you come out, they'll, they'll put you up. It's not, it's not like, okay. it's like Moon Room. You know what I mean? Where it's kind of like, you. it's like a, it's, they're closing it off a little bit so that okay. some of the riffraff gets gets yeah, out of there, no, you know. It's, yeah, you got to you got to kind of have some crowd control. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, I mean, there would just be some people that came every week and then they'd walk like five, six people. You know, yeah. and it's like, ugh. I know, because like, like, they're like, oh, I was jerking off my dog. Yeah, it's like, bro, <laughs> you're gonna talk about this every Tuesday. Yeah, there's this, there, we had this one lady that would come up and talk about her pussy cheese, dude. <laughs> like. What the uh, there's so much like <laughs> so much you have to listen to yeah to even like rise at this level oh dude like the amount of open mics that i've sat through and just like i don't know it's definitely scarred my brain oh yeah for sure yeah that's what i realized early on though is that uh um if you just have like okay jokes at an open mic you're good <laughs> you know what i mean like like, you don't even have to be the best comic right. in the room. You just got to be better than the people if that... If you're structured. Yeah. If yeah, you have exactly, a set exactly, punch. Exactly. A sense of direction. Exactly. Yeah. Because you, like, it's weird, like, when people first start, like, it, like some people just go, I'm just going to go up and talk, you know? And it's like, you're not that interesting. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I mean... It's, it's, it's like frustrating that like, uh, those are the people that like when I'm hosting an open mic, like two and a half minutes in, I'm lighting them. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to sit The sheer shit. confidence of someone who's just like, I'm just going to go up there and do my thing. Yeah. And you're like, what? <laughs> you don't have a thing. What is, what is that? <laughs> I wouldn't wish an open mic on my worst enemies, dude. You know? I don't think so either. And the fact that we sit through them <laughs> is, is. A true testament to how bad we want to do comedy. <laughs> if I had the United States nuclear codes, yeah, and they were like, "You need to give us the codes, or we'll torture you." Yeah, and then I was like, "Now nah, I'm, you know, I'm a super soldier. I'll never talk." Yeah, and then they just put me in an open mic, <laughs> and they go, "You're gonna sit here." <laughs> There's back to back to back to back open mics 24 <laughs> 7. I would immediately go 5, 8, 1, yeah. 16. I'd be like, just launch it at Copper Rocket. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, Copper Rocket is a fucking disaster. Yeah. We have we have one of those now too. Uh, we have we have a bar called Chumley's and it's it's got an open mic and it's bro, it's outside on it's the patio. Game, oh, it's it's 
the the bar's cool. It's a man. patio. It's mic? a patio mic, dude. There you go. And so we just did the first one. The, the, when we when uh, Raw Comedy closed off uh, Muggsy's for open mic, okay. they started a second open mic uh, right right around the corner, and it's bro, it's bad. It's bad, dude. Yeah, I just I don't know. I can't do that anymore, man. Yeah, I can't sit through them. I'm with you, man. I'm like once you start once you. Once you start getting into like clubs and like get in front of real audiences mm-hmm. and stuff, and you start having like success in those situations, it's really, really tough. Yeah, to go out and do shit like that, you know, right. like those little f- five person audience rooms and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're good, but they're not like they're they're good for when you're first starting and trying to develop right. material and stuff. But yeah, it's tough, man. Yeah, I feel like I don't I I don't really I don't think I do mics anymore, but I'll do like. I'll do like unpaid spots where they're like, yeah, like Moon Room is probably my favorite Chef's because kiss, you can dude. really just try shit. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and people are receptive. Yeah, once so. I, once I started doing the club stuff, I started treating Moon Room like an open mic because before yeah. I was treating it like I'm gonna showcase my best material, you know. Right. And now I'll I typically go up and like tell two jokes that are that are good just to get them on my side, and then just go into new shit and yep. just see what happens you know that's that's outside of just like that (laughs) i'm a whore man so outside of the adulation that your adoration that you get from uh from doing stand-up like uh the building material is my favorite part you know that's what's fun man like really building the catalog yeah you look at it as like an album yeah like it's it's a lot of fun i also feel like the further you get into this the the like the the more like bombing doesn't affect you as much. Right. I mean, it, when you're like, obviously like getting paid, it's a big showcase. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of good comics on it. That'll fuck with you. Right. You know what I mean? But going out like a moon room or something like that and bombing, like, all right, <laughs> you yeah. know, like, all right, that was, that was four new jokes there. So it's a sense of freedom too. Yeah. When you're just like, Oh, right. Yeah. That didn't work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I, like I did a show last night. If I would have bombed at that show, I would have been sad, you know, but you know, I did three shows. I did. I literally did two shows the night before and bombed both of them. <laughs> you Damn. know, it didn't didn't didn't, uh, didn't bother me at all. <laughs> Damn, but yeah, it's you learn a lot though. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't had a good bomb in a while. Thank oh God. yeah. But like, yeah, you'll have jokes that don't hit. But like an overall bomb. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's been, I, it's been a while. I think it's like you you know what's funny. It's just like how long can you. Yeah. Keep it funny. But that's that's the thing is like the shows where I'm bombing are shows where I'm not doing tested material. Like it's just shit I'm working out, just yeah. trying and stuff. That's why I don't really care. so Because I, I would well, never do that on a paid showcase, you know? Okay. Yeah. So that's not really bombing then. Yeah. 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 yeah it's well, it's it's get, doing stand up with zero laughs, you know, or yeah. very little, you know? Yeah. No, I just credit. If it's if it's new material and it bombs, I don't I yeah, don't yeah, call it a yeah, bomb. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's you protecting your ego. Oh, yeah, I'll tell them. I'll be like I'll be like, yo, this will be funny in six months. <laughs> Man, I don't I don't love anything that I write enough to stick with it. Like if it if I go up and I eat shit with it like two or three times, I just get rid of it. Like, yeah, maybe in like <coughs> two three years, that stuff that's not working, yeah, will somehow bridge the gap between. A new and old joke. Yes. And you're like, wow, now it's funny because it's like this perfect transition. Yeah. So I have a lot of that where you just have, it's almost like just like parts of a car. Mm-hmm. It's good. They're good parts. Yeah. But you're like, you don't need them right now. Yeah. And then you'll be like, oh shit. Uh, yeah. And then you put it all together. Yep. So that's, that's happened with like uh, a couple of my jokes, you know, cause I'm a, I'm a setup punchline guy. Right. So the jokes that I have that are longer form are either like where I took two jokes and smushed them together or I just did them so many times on stage that I just start ad libbing on them. You know what I mean? And then as you know, as something works, you try that a few times and it keeps working and then you add something else to that. And it's just like, I mean, I'll, I'll long form write stuff like everything out and stuff. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't, it, it doesn't work for me that way as much as just like, testing the material over and over and then like adding to it and yeah now sitting down and writing i don't know too many people that are capable of doing that and usually people that are like oh i sit down and write out all my stuff yeah they usually like suck yeah 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, I I do write. I write all my jokes on my phone and on a on paper. Yeah. But that's just in case, like, the phone goes away. Like, all right, right I have right. I have a backup, you know? Yeah, I just have, like, sentences or, like, bullet points. Yes, yeah. That's and then, like, this, this, and this. And then, yeah, you have, like, kind of the the system in your head of how it's going to go. Yeah. And then you just hope that you can keep building from different parts. Yeah. But it's all just repetition, man. That's like, 100%. That's why I wish Orlando had... They just... I, I, you think Orlando would have, like, 12 comedy clubs. Yep. Why do they have one? Like yeah, one? but Bonkers and the improv, right? And even Bonkers is kind of... But Bonkers is just in random spots. Yeah. Like, that's the other thing. Bonkers is just a bar show. Yeah. Series. Yeah. That they call a comedy club. Yeah. Yeah. Bonkers Comedy Club. It, well, why is it in Twisted Root Burger, then? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, we also have a Bonkers and Coco, but I don't even... Is that is that some bar called Murdoch's? You know what I mean? I don't even count that. Our only one is Gregory's, and it's it's above a restaurant. You know what I mean? It's like just a big room above a restaurant with a yeah. stage. You, know? you guys not, don't have like a Melbourne improv or? No, dude. We don't have anything. Like, so even the, the frustrating thing about Gregory's, it's our only comedy club, right? And our, it's, <laughs> they use a booking service for features and headliners. Mm -hmm. And the uh, host is booked by the same guy who, who books the Orlando improv. <laughs> so like, we don't even have a local guy wow. booking that. And so unless you, take the improv class or like know him personally like you don't you can't like i can't host i can't host a uh show at my local uh comedy improv. club yeah you or, know what i mean yeah. yeah i can't i can't because i i don't i don't have those connections yet oh, you know man. and that's like in my town dude like i, <laughs> I can do any show in my town no problem except that shit so you know what's funny though is like you get good, and then you go to a different city, mm -hmm. and then doors just open up to it's you. It's so but weird. Like your hometown. See, I never started in Florida. Yeah. But I felt it like when I moved to New York, mm -hmm. it was that like I started there. Yeah. So there was this aura like, you know, two, three years later of like, oh, yeah, he's like a New York guy. But then yeah. as soon as I went to L.A., everyone was like, oh, who's like the new guy? Yeah. But it's just like. Yeah, wherever you start, there's mm -hmm. like no love. I know, man. It's so Until weird. You come back, yeah. dude. I I just this month got booked on shows locally, uh -huh. and I haven't I haven't done local like shows in like since since the probably since the uh, Beachside Retro show you and I did. Wow. So like December, because I've seen you all over Orlando. Yeah, well, I have to, man. You're out of, you're yeah, out of your town. I don't have the option. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like so weird. Yeah, man. dude. I'll, I like I go up to Madcaps a lot. I go to Lakeland and yeah. or uh, not Lakeland, uh, uh, Winter Haven. Is that what it is? Winter yeah, Haven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. LOL. LOL. Yeah, and Orlando. That's a really nice uh -oh. club. Well, that's an hour. You want you want to smoke something? What have we got here? A fucking comedian. This show's not gonna go well. <laughs>